Ah, love. Probably the purest, most sought-after pleasure in life. You can't help getting all warm and fuzzy about couples and love around Valentine's Day. Know what else is pretty great? Anime girls. It's fascinating, isn't it? Through the power of art, we can characterize and give life to some of our biggest fantasies and interests. We can find ourselves getting so attached to these characters that when they finally go off and find love for themselves, we can feel the same happiness that they're feeling. Some people even fall in love with anime characters themselves. <laughs> we all know these guys. They can get so invested, so strongly attached to an anime character that they've fallen in love with. Some guys are even famous for dedicating their entire lives to one of these characters. When you think about it though, is it really so strange? These characters are given life through personalities and emotions and struggles that they go through. Is it really so strange to find a character that you just feel so attached to that you almost feel like you could dedicate yourself to them? Yep. Anime girls are a winding web of character traits and body types. Why would you ever limit yourself to one girl? It's a fantasy sampler platter out there, and I want to enjoy it all. Even the weird stuff. Little sister types, big sister types, nuns, nurses, schoolgirls, maids. Seriously, it's like a box of chocolates, and they're all the good chocolate. So we aren't celebrating couples love this February. No, 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 no. This February is all about the glorious harem. But kudo, how are we going to celebrate harems? Ha <laughs> ha. I am so glad you asked. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I welcome you to the Ecstasy Dream Harem Format. Harem Format, or EDH Format for short. Oh, hey, Kudo, did you know that Magic has a format just- No, 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 I didn't know that. Huh, what are the odds? What are the odds that another popular card game that I just so happen to play has a format of a very similar name? You really got me there, man. The world is just full of wacky and crazy serendipitous coincidences. What I'm going to be doing now is dedicating the rest of the card games and chills this February to this new format. You are more than welcome to request regular card duels, but just know that anybody who plays in this new format will have immediate stream priority. But we should probably get on to the rules of deck construction. 1. A character can only be represented in each level a single time. So if you want to rock Miku, for example, you can have a 0, a 1, a 2, and a 3 all in the same deck. However, you cannot have two Mikus of the same level. This also naturally means you can only have a single copy of each card. Because if you were to have multiple copies of the same card, then you would be representing each girl more than once at their own level. 2. Event cards are not legal. So I put some time into this, and honestly, I just don't think having events are a very good idea. The idea of this format is to have some fun and experiment with some wacky rules, and there are some events that you could build around to make the format a little less fun. Like, if you just so happen to build a music deck and then, like, have events that only affect music characters, it could be a little bit too much. So they're just gone for good. Feel free to use backups, though. 3. There are no Neo rules, so you can take any sets you want to and combine them. Totally up to you. Multiple characters of the same universe are fine as well. So if you really like the girls in Persona 5, then just use all the characters in Persona 5. Or guys, no judgments. Really, that's kind of it for the rules. I know that this is limiting already, so I don't really want to make it too complicated so that a lot of people can join. It is just for fun, after all. There's no need to make it really stress-filled. This kind of setup should guarantee that each of you have about 10 to 15 girls, or guys, no judgments, in your deck, and since every single set is open, it should give you a lot of options to choose from. Use that as a starting point and try not to think too hard. Our little contest will have these rules. Every match you play will net you two points. So even if you're not that confident in your deck, just playing will give you a chance to win. If you manage to beat me on stream, that's another point, so you'll walk away with three. If I manage to beat you, though, then you're going to lose one point, so you'll walk away with one. This system guarantees that whether you win or lose, you'll at least get something for just playing. If I don't have any other challengers, you are free to challenge as many times as you like during a stream. I'll be counting how many times each person plays, along with keeping track of everybody's points, so I'll try and give it to the people who have the lowest points or the lowest chances of winning so that they can stand a better chance. So what is the ultimate goal of all of this? What do you get if you win? It's nothing huge, but it might interest you if you're a longtime Kudokun fan. 
Next month, I plan on picking up Weiss Swartz regularly again. So we're going to be doing one Weiss Swartz video a week, and every month we're going to pick a different set as a theme. So after I figure out what set I'm going to focus on, I'll do the trial deck, I'll do a set review, and then I'll do a couple of deck profiles or deck doctors, depending on what people want. There's a lot of sets, and there's no guarantee I'll ever get to your favorite. So if you manage to win, I will let you choose the very first set that we start doing for the weekly Weiss Swartz segment. I know it's not anything huge, but you also get bragging rights. That's cool, too. And we shall dub this event the Ultimate Harem Challenge. A huge amount of luck to anybody who wants to participate, and have some fun out there. I'd like to show you the deck that I'll be using for this event too, though I was a little bit harder on myself when coming up with rules for the deck. See, none of you have to do this, but I took it one step further. I started construction on the deck by picking out my favorite girl from every single series that's represented in Weiss Swartz. By the way, it's about 65. Then I went through and picked out one card from each level of each character represented. This gave me about 200 cards to choose from. I then narrowed those 200 cards down into a deck list that I thought would at least function. So the list you see in front of you was handcrafted after I decided who I thought was the best girl in every single series that you see. Of course, because there's so many series, not every single series was represented, and obviously I'm not a huge nerd, so I haven't seen all of these series. If I came to a series that I had never heard of or I'd never actually seen anything from, I just went through the cards and picked the cutest girl that I could find. Sadly, not always the cards with the cutest artwork, and some of the characters just, whew, they don't have very many options at all. Sadly, this means the deck won't be very consistent or good, but with 42 different girls at my side, I don't think I could possibly be worried about anything. This video's already getting pretty long, so uh, I'm gonna go through these as quickly as I can. You shouldn't really need a full deck breakdown anyway. It's just the girls that I think are the cutest, and then one card that that character is on that would be semi-useful. So let's get to it! Starting off our level zeros is the best Persona 4 girl, Naoto. A deck like this has absolutely no consistency, so having cards like this that give me consistency is very useful. Every time this thing attacks, I get another chance to cycle, and that's good. Makoto is a 4000 level 0 with almost no downside. Since there's only one copy of everything in the deck, having Brainstorm that gets specific cards out of the discard pile is obviously useful. There weren't really any other Koskas to choose from, but honestly this card's worth it for the artwork alone. And it can no Mr. President a card from the back row if I really needed to. Chihai is another 4000 beater with almost no downside. Kuroko is a free runner with no restrictions. This Yuko kind of sucks, but I mean, I really wanted Yuko to be in here, and this is the only one that even kind of sort of fit. 500 assist in the back row isn't always bad. Silica, a 4k zero beater. Otome is another case where there's just not very many options, but this is the best I could find. This loot is not too, too great, but more brainstorm that gets me better cards is good. Sonia, more brainstorm, more back row. It was surprisingly hard to choose between Sasha and Leonhard, but eventually I went with Sasha, because she's just so gosh darn adorable. When she comes into play, she gives another character plus 1500 power, which is not insignificant. I feel like if I tarm this card right, I can break through specific card setups that I normally wouldn't be able to get over. Momo is a suicider that could potentially summon the top card of my deck. Now's a one-time 4000 assassin who doesn't have any downsides at all, so that makes her useful. Also, yes, now Tomori was the best girl in Charlotte, okay? Don't you look me in the eyes and utter the phrase Yusa, because Yusa was not the best girl, now was clearly the best girl, and we're moving on. Ringo, surprisingly... Seriously, though, now was definitely the best girl in Charlotte. Yusa was trash tier waifu. Every single argument you have that disagrees with either of those two statements is wrong. You're blatantly wrong. Ringo's surprisingly useful here. She lets me search for a level 1 without making me discard a card from my hand, which is something that these effects normally have with them, so that's definitely a plus. Also, I know it's weird to have a Puyo Pop character in here, but she is the cutest girl in Puyo Pop in my opinion. When Coco attacks, she gives another one of my characters plus 1500 power. Again, this is a card that could get me out of a sticky situation because 1500 is kind of a lot of power. And it's free. It doesn't cost any stock. That's great. 
Getting on to level 1, Mitsuru was actually kind of difficult to pick a card for because the Persona 3 set is so outdated, most of the cards are really weak by today's standards. So I went with the Persona 4 version of her. She's kind of useless, but if I happen to level up before my opponent and swing into a 0 or something, it's kind of cool. Mai was a shoe in If you're a huge pervert like I am, she was very influential. She was one of the first female fighting game characters to feature breast mechanics. Overall, I think we all owe her a huge debt, but anyways, whenever she attacks you can pay 2 stock to get a character back from the discard pile, so consistency is nice. Okay, whew, I'm just gonna say right now, I don't know a single thing about Love Live, so I don't actually know if this is the best girl or not. But she's got really cute hair, so she's the one I chose. This is a pretty good card too, uh, level 1, 65 base with Super Encore, can't complain. I was stuck between this Ryuko and Berserk Ryuko, but the problem is Berserk goes back to the deck when it gets reversed, which isn't good. And this can go up to 8500 one time to step over something, so that's why I chose this one instead. Kinoko is uniquely good here. Her effect gets two different characters, one yellow and one blue, and this deck, as you've no doubt noticed, offers all four colors. I found when building this, cards with experience are actually really useful, so I'm using this Hina. I can play her and then essentially draw a card from my deck and it doesn't cost any stock, so that's pretty sweet. Plus, if I'm using this card with experience, I can use other cards with experience and I can get all of their power boosts by just leveling up with high level cards. Nico is probably the worst card in the deck, but she was just so adorable I couldn't say no. She's a free 6500, but she becomes a level 0 on the field, which means my opponent can suicide into her with a level 0 uh, suicider and she also goes back to the deck when she's reversed. All around an awful card, but ah, uh, she's just so adorable. Erinias is clearly the only really cute girl in Chain Chronicle, but all of her cards are really bad, so I'm just gonna take the 1 1500 backup card. Shining Adisa will probably be my ace in the hole, she's a very clear fit for the deck. She has experience level 2, which makes her a natural 75 with Kill Yourself Encore meaning I can continuously bring her back without having to sacrifice any of my hand or stock. Just really surprised I found such a great pick. Chris is a bit of a liability too, but she's a 7,000 that costs zero stock at level 1, so uh, that's a pretty big booty to have to not cost any stock. The problem is she can't attack unless I have two characters in the back row, and every turn I reveal the top card of my deck, and if it's a level 0 she starts eating my stock. Which, believe me, is nowhere near as sexy as it sounds. It's actually a game-losing effect. Starting off level 2 is the flat-chested tyrant herself, Miss Etna. Etna gives me a free deck refresh if I have 5 or less cards when I play her, and all of my characters get plus 2000 power. She's also a 2 soul attacker that has super encore, so that's always nice. In normal play, this is actually a really, really good card. The only reason we don't see more of it is because mid-boss is a lot better, but, I mean, in this case, Etna's slightly cuter than mid-boss. I mean, come on. Using Louise and Kiriki, um, definitely here for Kiriki. She's absolutely gorgeous. Louise is kind of boring. But anyways, this is a level 2, 2 stock, 2 soul attacker that is also a suicider. Everything I just said makes me happy, so obviously gotta put this in. Obvious. We've got another double card, Coco and Nanaka. Honestly, they're both kinda cute, I guess. I think Coco's a little bit cuter. But anyways, she's a nice little reset button because you can just pay one stock continuously to like make your opponent's character lose 1000 power. So if things haven't been going my way and I have a lot of stock built up, I can just sort of use this to weaken all of my opponent's characters so I can get a field wipe. That way I can stay in the game without having to sacrifice too many characters. Claudia is a really interesting card. If she's being front attacked, you can pay 4 stock to give your opponent plus 6 soul. It's kind of neat because unless you have the worst timing in the world, this is pretty much going to guarantee your opponent fails their attack. Obviously with the downside being if their attack goes through, then it's pretty much going to be game. There's also something else about this card. I just, I feel like there's something about this card that draws me into it and makes me want to put it in the deck. Huh. I'm gonna have to look into this a little bit and come back. You guys knew there was gonna be a Haruhi in here, and I even get to use a fun one that I rarely use. This Haruhi gets plus 500 power for each different trait on your characters. The interesting thing about this is because everybody's so diverse, if I have a full field of five characters, everybody's gonna have two diverse traits, and it counts for itself. So, all in all, this is pretty much a base 10,000, as long as I have all five character slots open. Er, full. My bad. Full. 
We're using a red Urza, which is interesting because Urza's main color is yellow. This Urza's great though, she's a two soul attacker that you can clock yourself to heal back. This Cheryl has level 5 experience, which fits our experience motif rather nicely. And her experience makes her a suicider, so she's a one cost suicider at level 2 as long as I have a level 3 and a level 2 in the level area. It's a pretty easy effect to pull off with a big payoff. Kuro Yuki Hime is a really really great finisher. If my opponent hasn't deck refreshed yet and I notice that they're out of a lot of climaxes, this is a really great way to punish them because you can pump her soul up as many times as you want for one stock each. Or she could just be a two soul attacker, you know, whatever. Michelle finally gives us another back row character we can use. She gives global level assist which is pretty awesome. She also has an oh no button in the form of a free deck refresh. You just pay two stock, you arrest her, and you get the deck refresh without having to give yourself one damage. Overall, just a really solid pick. <sighs> I really like Priscilla, but there's only two of them and the other one requires setup, so we've got to use this one. It's just a 2500 level 2 backup. There is one optional effect that is really situational, but could potentially take away one of my opponent's attacks, so... I mean, I guess that's nice too. But just look at that adorably smug face. <sighs> that is a smirk that could kill a man. Blackrock Shooter is just an amazing card in general, and she's especially good in this deck. On the turn she's played, when she reverses something, she kicks it back into the deck, and I can also search my deck for a character of that level or lower and put it in my hands. In a deck with so many diverse choices, getting an effect like this for free is just insane. Shauna's here. Unfortunately, Yuji is too, but this is too good of a card to pass up. Experience level 5, and if we have it, it gets plus 1500 power, and also, anytime this card reverses another card, I can kick it onto the deck. This is great, because at level 3, when my opponent's just throwing a bunch of zeros and ones at me to get extra soul damage off, I can actually kick those guys into the deck to benefit me. Also, when it comes into play, I can draw 2 and discard 1, so that's nice. My Yoi is a great way to get to the last turn of the game. Because you can drop a couple of level zeros and then drop her, and she makes them two soul attackers, plus she has experience level four, and her experience level four gives one character plus one soul. You only get the first effect once because it's on play, but you get the other effect every single time she attacks. I mean, if you're gonna blow up your level zeros anyway, they might as well do max damage, am I right? To be honest, this isn't the Leo I wanted to use. I wanted to use the one with bodyguard, but the one with bodyguard isn't quite as useful, but... This Leo, when she's played, I can draw two, discard one, and I can also pump something infinitely to be very powerful. Great if I'm ending the game with a lot of stock and I just really need to get a field wipe for whatever reason. Of course Homer is gonna be here, I love this little psychopath, mwah. It surprises me that after all this time this remains to be such a great card. Opposing character gets minus one soul to stop a lot of level zero cheeses, and as long as my stock is four or less, it gets plus 500 power and super encore. You may have noticed, but our level two lineup is very, very, very expensive, so this is a great card to end on. <sighs> I need some water. Last card of the deck is Chitoge, the 42nd member of the harem. Heals on play, and I can pay one stock and rest my two back row characters to give her plus 2000 power and make her kick whatever she reverses back onto the deck. Oh, okay, it's finally done. I am so sorry this video is out so late. You guys have no idea how long it took me to edit this video. I had to have read like 400 cards when I was going through this, and uh, I didn't think it would take this long, but this video is actually one of my most time-consuming videos. I think it took me pretty close to 20 hours to make. So if you have any reservations about playing, you should totally play so that all of my time doesn't go to waste. By the time you guys see this, it probably will be the first day of the uh, harem challenge, so don't feel bad about it. Uh, I know I didn't give you guys a whole lot of notice because I made this video so late, but if you'd like to join in, you can still join in one of the other two. Uh, I think there will be one on the 28th and the 21st. So get out there and good luck everyone. I'm ready to prove that I am the ultimate anime girl fan. Hey you, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you left me a like. They help the channel grow and let me know that you want more of this kind of content in the future. The channel is currently being supported by these lovely folks on Patreon. You guys rock! If you have any thoughts on the video, of course leave them in the comment section below along with suggestions on what I should do next, but also answer this question to prove that you made it to the end of the video, if you feel like it. And finally, if you found this video by accident, then subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Kudo news.
You can also hit the notification bell. Ringing the little bell will let you know when I upload a new video. See you next time!